spent the last few days camping at an erupting volcano and then found ourselves at the hospital as I battled severe food poisoning. I spent 10 hours on an IV. It's been an intense 48 hours. We're filled with mixed emotions as we continue into the unknown through Mexico. We need to monitor Stacy's health and there's a looming problem we need to take care of with our truck. Meanwhile, we'll be doing our best to thrive in a new region, experience its uniqueness within our budget, and immerse ourselves in new culture, food, and backroads. This is our journey from the mountains to the Pacific. Mexico Overland is always exciting. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No. For something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners. Ten hours later, we are back in the truck, mm. and Stacy is alive and feeling better. Get all my drugs. With all her prescriptions. I oh, think, which I think, was all free. I'm a little confused. We're both confused. I think this was the craziest 24 hours of both our lives, from waking up at an erupting volcano, buying mezcal on the streets, and then going to a Mexican hospital where no one speaks English. <laughs> Yeah, the lady said right to my face, it's like, you're the first English-speaking person I've ever had in here. Filling up propane in a thunder and lightning storm. Yeah. Seems legit. Feeling the weight and the effects of the changing seasons, we're motivated to head south. We'll be leaving the state of Mexico and heading towards the state of Oaxaca. Oaxaca is famous for its world-class cuisine, surf breaks, and jungles, and we're excited to experience all of it. The tropical storm has turned many of the roads to mud, and it's turned us towards finding camp a little earlier than expected. Cien pesos per persona, so doscientos para dos. Well, finally get to try a barralito. This is how we brave the storm. This is well, that's how Matthew braves the storm. This is how I have to brave the Daisy's storm. Daisy's off the sauce. Off the sauce for a few more days. I remember seeing these in Baja, and I just love the little chubby bottle and thought they were cool, so cheers. And drinking out of a bottle is way more fun. It is. And it's just like a little, little grenade. Hmm. Kind of tastes like every other cerveza in Mexico. <laughs> Our beer reviews have been poor. <laughs> However, this actually tastes like a red stripe to me. If you've had red stripe, I think it's a Jamaican beer. I like Red Stripe, and I like this, so. Cheers. This is a really cool campsite that we stumbled upon yesterday while just driving down back roads trying to find wild camping. Full outdoor seating area. You got like a coal cooking stove, sink. And then there's way more over here, look at this. We've got this really nice shaded area, beautiful pool, another cool seating area, the fire pit, and a beautiful view. They also make mezcal here. This place is called Temezcal. You can see the rock piles right there and there where the agave is. Look at the size of that bulbous base and then these spindly little branches. Beautiful manicured garden. And there 
there Sunday. Look at how muddy we got to get here. You can't even see the tread. You can't even see the tread in the Falcons. It's just clay. This is literally like concrete now that's dry. I can't even pick it out. It's insane. We desperately need to figure out a mud flap fender situation. I can't even pick it out of the tread. Hopefully it'll come off on the highway. Okay. All right, I'll have the big one. There you go. Mmm. Oh, so much smoother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We had a few hour drive from just outside of Tehuacan to the beautiful city of Oaxaca. We were greeted yet again by something brand new for us to experience on this trip. Asani, good morning to you. Asani, good morning. We are in Oaxaca City, outskirts, near a little town called Tule. Staying at the nicest campsite I think we've ever stayed we're sta at. We're staying at an RV park that makes you never want to wild camp again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's funny because I think wild camping is, off is like very glorified. Like, oh, I didn't stay at any campsites. But it's like, and the campsites are awesome. The campsites are so awesome. We've met more people in at this one RV park than we've met on this entire trip so far. Mm -hmm. Which is exactly kind of what we've been looking for. We want to meet people that are doing the same thing as we're doing. and have the same mentality about life on the road and adventure and we want to share stories about like the hard things and the easy things and we just haven't had that until now and it's really fulfilling to just be able to just talk to people that are doing the same thing as us. They cut mangoes better than me. It didn't take long for us to recognize this as the most unique and interesting market that we had ever been to. With artisans of every kind and food for every palate, this is the type of experience we treasure. Dang, it's really good. Another hailstorm for the books. And would you look at all the goodies we got from the market. A new beach blanket and some fun vessels for our mezcal that is hopefully less diesel and rocket fuel and more agave than the last one. Today is the day we do some much needed maintenance slash repairs on our Land Cruiser Chinook. Yeah. <laughs> We'll tell you what we had to have welded onto our truck, but first we have to remove this boat anchor. We're ditching the diesel heater. <laughs> it's barely ever worked, and we'll try and maybe get something in South America, but this guy is a dud. I don't even want to deal with trying to fix it. No. To be completely honest. No. I'd rather have the storage space. We haven't had to need it. No. And people do this trip without it. Yep. And if we time our seasons right, then uh, we won't need it. So. We come from the north. We shouldn't need it here. One very dusty, disgusting. Easily heater. Here you go, sweetheart. Nice. I got you something. So much. I love gifts on the road. First, please choose your vessel. Oh, this is me. Okay, <laughs> I guess Rob goes first. <laughs> uh, this one looks nice. Oh, you would choose that. Great. Three out of four. Of 
of these fruits look familiar? Potato or not, it's going in a smoothie. Apparently this is how you know it's ripe. But I, I, don't, I don't really know what, what we're about to find. Okay. That's interesting. It's not what I was expecting. Doesn't really smell like much. Looks super weird. Is it supposed to be this color? I, I don't know. So. Yeah, I think so. Wow, that's a... And it's got a really cool pit. Kind of looks like meat. <laughs> looks like pulled pork. <laughs> All right, it's going in. Hope we don't die. A little bit of citrus and guava, I think, will be a nice touch. It's like freaking cake. It actually tastes like this should be a cake. Like, oh my gosh. It's like pudding. It is like pudding. It's wow. like mousse. Yeah. Time and again, we're reminded that the human experience thrives on human connection. Fueled with the inspiring stories from other travelers, our journey continues. If you're enjoying this video, please pause and smash that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. It's free and it really does help us out. down there in a while but I think it'll lead to an awesome view so Sure feels like the spot. Off-road route, which is awesome. Again, yeah. 30 or so kilometers 
-hmm. off-road through some remote villages around San Juan del Pacifico. San Jose del Pacifico. That one. Then in the pines, which means it's cooler. And we are taking about four days to do <laughs> what could be. I mean, you could drive to the coast in a day from Oaxaca easily. Um, most, most people, people take, do. <laughs> most people take that or two, or two days. We are uh, taking our sweet time because we heard it's really humid there. Yeah, we're not quite prepared for the onslaught of heat that may be in our future. Waiting for us. Yeah, so we're gonna enjoy this off-road route. We're gonna enjoy the mountains. I mean, we're in this, this camp is beautiful. You saw the drone shots this morning. We could stay here for 10 days. Yeah. But we're not going to. No. <laughs> we are gonna go find a river. Yes. Maybe we can swim in it. Okay, let's make some miles. Just when we think we're in the middle of nowhere on an off-road route, there appears a beautiful Mexican village. Have I ever seen a bright pink church <laughs> in the middle of a jungle? What? Coconuts everywhere. I want some. So we stopped for lunch, but um, ended up with Nieves instead because that's a meal. One is banana, and it has literal chunks of like ginormous banana. And one is coconut and it has chocolate with coconut in it and the humidity is making sure that these are keeping us cool. <laughs> Just heard thumping in the jungle. I'll give you one guess what kind of tree this is. Freaking mango tree. God is real, and he likes mangoes. What the heck? Ah! It's heaven. He just fell from the sky. Our Canadian is showing once again. Tell me it's really hot without telling me it's really hot. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's right there. <laughs> Water. 
We have found it. We found it. It's here. It's been here all along. The Pacific is still, still there. The Great Pacific Coast. This is thrilling. It's like a new frontier. It smells like it too. Oh. Matthew found a coconut. Now we need the second tool. Wow. Even when it's been in the sun for too long, it still tastes delicious. like the nectar of the gods. <laughs> Provisions. Ah. <laughs> I come back and Matthew's just like adopted birds. I told him puppies, not birds. <laughs> wow, hello. So we have discovered that this tree that we are camped next to is a uh, saputilla, or saputilla, if you're a gringo. And it's of the same family of the mammy sapote. It's also called, oh, it's also called little sapote. And it's got these little brown fruits. And you saw the mammy earlier, the mammy sapote. This is a sapotilla. And we're gonna try it. <laughs> Yay! Okay. Oh my gosh, it tastes like brown sugar. What? Oh my gosh, it tastes like brown sugar. What? Brown sugar. It's like a sugar plum. <laughs> that is crazy. It's like dessert. It's like pudding. Wow. It's hardly even a fruit at this point. It's so cool tasting a new fruit. Despite the nearly unbearable heat and humidity, all the beaches had people on them. And while yes, we love meeting people, we love balancing it with solitude. We were really gonna have to get out of our way and off the beaten path if we were gonna find what we were looking for.
be Mexico without puppies at our camp. <laughs> These ones are especially cute. I think we found it. To find another paradise sweaty beach? Paradise sweaty beach. <laughs> the rain is so welcomed. It's nice and cool off my arm. Driving in the rain with our windows down because it's so nice. <laughs> oh yeah, that's glorious. Wow. <laughs> Matthew is in the well-deserved shower after our bug attack from the beach that you just saw. But now we're at a surf camp and it's beautiful and the Chinook is parked under a tree which means shade so we're gonna get cleaned up and enjoy this spot. <laughs> Traveling overland across Mexico has already proven to be incredibly rewarding. Embracing the unknown and overcoming its challenges has expanded our perspective on life outside our home. We've been working really hard every week to bring you the best content and to grow this channel. 
If you've made it this far in the video, I hope that we've earned your subscription. This support brace right here is what we added onto the truck in Oaxaca. We noticed that the camper floor was starting to sag a little bit and this is us preventing a future problem. We added four of these, two on each side with a very sturdy extra body mount to support the outermost parts of the camper. And we're feeling really good about that. We also made use of the fender flare mud flaps that we've been carrying around since Arizona. This is maybe not the perfect solution, but I think it's a good looking solution that will hopefully save the camper and our faces from more onslaughts of <laughs> Mexican mud. <laughs> If you want to support us further, you can grab some dope merch from our store or you can join our Patreon family where we post detailed route information, behind the scenes content and answer your questions. Thank you, as always, for being here and we'll see you in the next one as we continue our journey on the Pan America Highway. This is what happens when you actually don't know what you order and you get two giant seafood meals. Bon appétit!